Hello ladies and gents, it's Hagbard Celine here on another beautiful afternoon, and today we will be watching a video which stars one of our favorite desert creatures, the cockroach. Yes, today, for the sake of levity, we're returning to a familiar face, and one whose public image is being tarnished as we speak, something that I frankly am reveling in. So, let's add our fuel to the fire, shall we? Let us have a light day where we watch a video with the combined efforts of Linda the Cockroach and Dylan the Manlet. I am every Islamophobe's worst nightmare. Interesting, as you also appear to be the moderate Muslim's worst nightmare as a defender and supporter of Sharia law and one that has absolutely no problem attacking the nonconformity of a one Ayan Hirsi Ali, who should ostensibly be your ally as a woman who is Muslim and empowered and loud and proud and from Brooklyn and Palestinian and I wear a hijab and I run my mouth and I'm on national television and I'm hanging out with you. Excuse me, Miss Cockroach, but let's not pretend like you're allowed to speak freely or speak your mind. You're being used and you know you're being used. You're comfortable with being used as a mouthpiece because you know, as an operative for care, that it's highly unlikely in modernity that in the West a woman activist is going to be attacked outright, and it's highly more likely that a male activist would be. And I don't even mean physically, I just mean attacks in the public eye. I mean attacks on character, attacks on things you've said in the past, attacks on stances you hold. All of these things I think your organization recognizes you're pretty much immune from simply by being a woman. Hence, you were allowed to lead the Women's March. It's a good effort, but if you wanted an accurate title, it should be Spouting Out Bullshit with Linda the Cockroach. Hi, I'm Dylan Marin, and I am here with Linda Sarsour, activist, executive director of the Arab American Association of New York, and one of the lead organizers of the Women's March. So, she's a person that collects money from various organizations for accomplishing nothing. Excellent. Cool woman's empowerment, dude. Hi, Linda. Thanks for hey, being Tom. here. Thank you for having me. Please, it's a true honor. Oh, suck each other's dicks in private, please. Um, so this has been a pretty busy time for you. You've always been doing activist work, but since the Women's March, a lot has happened. So there is a lot of bullshit shut down. So is the 21st century version of oy vey shut it down gonna be inshallah shut it down? A lot of bullshit to shut down. Whoa whoa hearing you talk like that makes me nervous. I know that there's a lot of bullshit you spout but don't don't think about self-harm it's not like that. Well great. Um Linda are you ready to shut down some bullshit? I am ready. Okay, great. Intersectional feminism is just stupid liberal jargon. <laughs> oh, we are off to the races at the first question. Fantastic. Let's see her lovely and well-educated answer for this. Intersectional feminism is the only way to go. Linda, you'll excuse me for not taking the only way to go advice from a Muslim, right? because women are intersectional human beings. We don't live single-issued lives, so you can't cut me up into 10 pieces and expect me to work on my arm separately than my leg. We, we have to do intersectional feminism, which is why you saw that demonstrated fiercely and clearly at the Women's March on Washington. Well, Linda, that was an absolute non-answer, so in response, I will leave you only this. Shabu was talking about uh, intersectionality. I'm a walking intersectionality. The Women's March was great, but it's not going to do anything. A more pertinent way to frame this question would be, fine, the Women's March was great, but what were the nascent issues they actually wanted addressed? To which you will get nothing but crickets, I assure you. The Women's March on Washington was a continuation of work that has been happening for some for centuries and some for decades in this country. We're not the first people to march and we weren't the last people to march. Yes, Linda, but what were the goals of the march? What rights were you marching for? And when you marched, what did you accomplish? That's the question. But it was important to create a catalyst under this new administration. It was just a, a created a spirit of 
visible activism in a way that we have not seen in a long time. Ma'am, what rock have you been living under that you don't see a visible spirit of activism in recent times? You can't support Black Lives Matter and Islam and women's rights. You have to pick one. Okay, listen, this quote-unquote interview was a farce to begin with. It's clear as day that there were multiple takes of this and that she was already aware of all of the questions you were going to present and thus is, it's essentially scripted. But did you have to include the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard in my life? I've never seen a single individual that tells an activist that they're activisting on too many principles. It just might be that a lack of fo focus kills the efficiency of that activism, which is a fair observation. I absolutely believe that when progressive movements organize together that we actually strengthen it because we, I, t I bring my people, you bring your people, that girl brings her people, that guy brings their people, we build power together. Of course, that's your utopian picture of what you should hope one of these get-togethers looks like, where in reality, Shy, the Women's March, and even within it, there were plenty of issues where people came to the table with their particular problems in mind, and when their needs weren't met or when those problems being brought up made them feel ostracized, they left, you see? Because you can't actually focus on all the issues at once and make every person that considers one of those issues a major problem happy. That's impossible. And the opposition's united. Uh, all their issues are in one bucket together and they're united around hate and divisiveness and taking the rights of minorities uh, away. No. No, I'm not going to let that slide. Let's just play that clip back to show that this is nothing but buzzwords and fear-mongering. It's completely ridiculous. And the opposition's united. Uh, all their issues are in one bucket together and they're united around hate and divisiveness and taking the rights of minorities uh, away. Miss Cockroach, I regret to inform you, what you just said doesn't actually mean anything. You're just accusing your opponents of essentially being evil and wanting to take the rights of minorities away. Something you can't prove, but I'm sure it works for your narrative. So why can't we be united on very basic principles of justice, compassion, and love, which that's what we organize around. So I never understood this concept of like, you know, when we bring everyone together, we dilute the message. No, we build more power together. I think that now the progressive movement has realized that we woke up and this is why we're seeing mass mobilization of people that are literally coming from all walks of life and care about different things. <laughs> yes, they are coming from all walks of life and embracing many things. Enjoy your Antifa allies, dear. I just don't want to get political. I'm Muslim, so when I wake up in the morning and I'm breathing, I'm political. I'm like walking politics. Now, she's not lying here. She's just being more honest than you'd think. Because Islam, and note that that's what her point was, I'm a Muslim, Islam is an inherently political system. So of course, as a Muslim, you wake up and your whole life is political because your whole life is Islam, and Islam is political. She's just admitting the truth here, but in a way that makes it sound good. Like, my religion has been politicized. By the Prophet Muhammad, piss be upon him. And I feel political, and I, that I have to be political. But generally speaking, we all have to be political. If we are not political, if we are not engaged, then we get orange man in the White House. I mean, that's just the, the fact of the matter. If you're claiming that the American populace as a whole was less politically engaged, not that voter turnout was less or any of the other things, but that they were, as a whole, less politically engaged during this election than previous elections, I think that you might be mentally ill. If you're protesting, you must hate America. See, even with pre-canned questions, you can't come up with anything interesting to present, because if you presented the actual points, instead of these ridiculous straw men, you'd make utter asses of yourselves, and you know it. Dissent is the highest form of patriotism. When you protest, when you're pushing your government that's supposed to represent the people to be better, right? To love more people, to respect people's rights. That is what a patriot is, and I do again believe that dissent is the highest form of patriotism. Dissent is not the highest form of patriotism, however, it can be a tool for a patriot. It doesn't implicitly mean all dissent is good, fool. Beyond that, would you like to discuss exactly how dissent 
is handled in your politicized religion, ma'am? Would you like to discuss what the treatment of apostates is? You know, people that dissent from your religious beliefs. Well, as a Muslim, you need to condemn terrorism. When in fact people ask me as a Muslim to condemn terrorism as a Muslim, that, in, that question, that request is inherently bigoted. It's, it's basically telling me that I lack the humanity, right? That, my, that, that somehow that I somehow must support this if I don't say that I don't support it. Like this idea that I can't be given the benefit of the doubt as a Muslim, that this is absolutely outrageous regardless of who the violence is being committed against. So I do condemn terrorism, but I do it as a human being, not as a Muslim. It's very interesting that you should feel the need to make that separation, Ms. Cockroach. It's almost like you know that as a Muslim, they're doing the right thing. But you know, as a person, as a secular Western person, I condemn the terrorists. As a Muslim, I, I kind of know that they're, they're probably right. However, putting that aside, you are an outspoken Sharia advocate. So it's not the terrorism that I'm particularly worried about. The fact is, is that you support Sharia, the terrorists support Sharia. So it doesn't matter if you distance yourself from them, your goals are the same. So it's not a Muslim ban, it's a ban on some Muslim majority countries. A, it's not. B, you work for an organization that was offended at the lyrics to the introduction song to Aladdin. So I'm not really concerned about your feelings. It is absolutely a Muslim ban. Our president, when he was a candidate, said, I'm going to do a complete shutdown of Muslims. Like he said it, I didn't say it. He started out with these seven countries, and in, in reference to even these seven countries, he said, maybe we'll take the Christian refugees because they're more persecuted than the Muslims. Are you going to deny that, oh sweet little cockroach? Or do you know that in Muslim-majority countries, they treat the minority very poorly? Are you going to acknowledge that, or is this where you pivot? So he did create a preference of one religion over the other. Just because we see these seven Muslim-majority countries doesn't mean that list won't grow. So we have to stop it now before we end up putting every Muslim-majority country on the list. So you admit it's not a ban on Muslims, but you're super concerned that he'll add more countries to the list. Are you familiar with the, uh, the fact that Kuwait just added those same Muslim countries to their no-fly list, if you will? where they're not accepting any refugees or any sort of immigration from those nations. They're a Muslim-majority country. It might be about the violence and the terrorism, Linda. Just a thought. But radical Muslim terrorism. Muslims are about 1.8 billion people in the world. We are the fastest growing religion. Considering that you have predominantly spread around the third world and you allow the marriage to four wives and the forcible insemination of those wives, it's not really surprising that you're the quote-unquote fastest growing religion in the world. You fuck like bunnies. It's not a whole lot deeper than that. You live in the sticks and you fuck like bunnies. And when you take the actions of a few and you paint with a broad brush a whole entire community, you are alienating 1.8 billion people in the world. So it, 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 it's really sad every time there's a terrorist attack that Muslims hold their heart and say, please God, don't let it be a Muslim, because people understand the backlash that comes with that. So you're not going to acknowledge the fact that the reason why the Muslims hold their chest and say, please don't let it be a Muslim is because overwhelmingly it is. The overwhelming majority of terrorist attacks on the planet have been committed by Muslims in any sort of modernity. You, you know that, but you'd like to pivot away from that to, oh, but the backlash to these poor communities of people that housed these people, we don't care anymore. So not only are we horrified by the actual act that happens, but then we have to worry about the retaliation that some of our fellow Americans, and oftentimes the government with their policies, engage against Muslim communities that have nothing to do with these terrorist attacks. Except for the mosques and Islamic centers that have imams that preach this kind of garbage that we're not allowed to shut down because Islamophobia, oh, we're going to hurt their feelings. Again, people are going to stop listening to you very soon. Everything would have been fine if Hillary were president. Everything would not have been fine if Hillary were president. I was planning on going to protest on Inauguration Day, even if Hillary were going to be president. 
You know, I keep hearing this defense from so many people about the protest currently going on that no matter what they were planning this protest, but the events didn't seem to get organized until after the November announcement, till after we knew the results. It's almost like you're lying, Linda. It's almost like you're covering your ass and, and attempting to seem non-partial when in reality you couldn't be more of a biased individual. Now, would I have preferred Hillary be the president? Absolutely, because I would rather have Hillary Clinton as my opponent in the White House than for the orange man and a bunch of KKK white supremacists. But <laughs> a bunch of KKK white supremacists. Good God, have you been hanging out with Tariq and Talib much, or? We were still, we, st we were still killing black people, you know, at the hands of law enforcement in this country. We yes, the state sponsors this killing of black people. They just send out the right-wing death squads to the inner cities and just shoot up hood rats. You're right, Linda. It's, it's totally like that. We still have poverty. We were still... Yes, we do indeed still have poverty. Linda, did your woman's march solve poverty? Do you have a plan to end poverty? What kind of delusions of grandeur are bouncing around in your little barobed head, dear? Deporting a thousand immigrants a day. You mean deporting illegal migrants. These aren't immigrants, dear. They are illegal migrants. You are not allowed to cross the lines into other people's country without that country's approval. This is a universal rule. Our foreign policy was horrific at best a vague statement um, both under the bush administration and under the obama administration so the problems would have been still there now we just have additional problems and we have exasperated the very problems we already had before there was ever an orange man or a hillary clinton how does somebody who uses this many words to say nothing attain power prestige and respect from any community how is someone this vapid your leader how vapid are you if this level of vapidity is your leadership role? It's horrifying. If you're pro-Islam, then you must hate Jews. This one really drives me crazy. Um, I'm, I'm sure it does, because you know, in something like 95% of all cases, this is probably true. But you go ahead and talk about the fractional percentage globally of American Muslims that might not particularly care for the next holocaust the rest of them totally down with killing all the jews just an fyi i'm a semite i am uh, a muslim um, who believes in the same god that jews believe in so how am i supposed to hate people who believe in the same god that i believe in like how does that even make sense how does believing that muhammad rode an ass with the face of a human to the afterlife make any sense i don't know but you seem to manage that Beyond that, Linda, the theological reason why Muslims hate Jews is that they're not Muslims, and they know about Islam, and they haven't converted to the true religion, the third book in the series, you see. They're working against the God you purport to follow, so you have to hate them. Um, and I will say that the Jewish American community, in particular progressive Jews, have been the biggest allies of Muslims. We have been working with them for years. They have been our staunch supporters, have stood and put their bodies on the lines for our community. So, Yes, there are some grossly misinformed American Jews that think a mass migration of Islam into the United States wouldn't end in them fleeing in the same manner that they've fled Europe. Twice now. Because they can't seem to learn. To say that People like me who have worked for justice for all people or, and have a very clear track record of standing against anti-Semitism within my own community and outside of my community is just ludicrous. Um, and I will tell you that our Jewish friends will say the same, that Muslims have been their closest allies. For someone that gets so upset for painting Muslims with a broad brush, you seem to have absolutely no problem speaking for your global Muslim population. Now, if you're speaking for the American population, I'll even grant you that. Because if you're speaking of the American population, you're speaking of about 3 million individuals. Now that's 3 million of 1.6 billion. That is 0.1875% of the Islamic population. So 0.1875% of the Islamic population, we can say, with some surety, isn't 100% anti-Semitic. They don't really hate the Jews that much. They might not particularly care for them, but they don't, they don't hate them enough that they make children's cartoons about where to stab the Jew. 
Unlike your Palestinian relatives, of course, dear. What's happening right now is awful, but there's nothing we can do. Oh, y'all better find something to do. What is it about so many Muslims and, well, Anna is an Armenian, that they want to act hard and Latino and as though they came from the streets? It's very clear, ma'am, that you've never experienced any sort of real hardship in your life. You came from a very upper middle class background. I know this for a fact. Please don't pretend like you're thug or from the streets in any capacity whatsoever. There's a lot of things we could do right now. Okay, we're going to fast forward through most of the drivel of this answer to get to the actual meat of it after all the fluffy frills. It's also about personal relationships. Like if you're a white student, why don't you ask your black classmate, are you good? You all right? I got you. Like. <laughs> Two things, Linda. One. If you walk up to just a random black student and do that, he's just going to be perplexed. I mean, utterly perplexed at what the fuck you think you're doing. And two, did you just put the onus of all this on white men again? Do you have a, do you have a fetish, Linda? Do you, you know, asking people how they feel, if they need anything, if you know someone's undocumented, being like, don't worry, like, we're with you, we're together. Yeah, we're with you and we're together, right up until the ICE agents show up and then you have absolutely no power or jurisdiction over the situation. Those little interactions, anybody can do. And I think those are the most meaningful things to me when someone drops me a text message and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. If you need anything, let me know. So, Linda, it doesn't sound to me like you need to be an activist or involved in activism. It seems to me like you need to be a part of a relationship, like a healthy one. Maybe, maybe also some group therapy. It seems like you're in need of a lot of attention, a lot of feedback, a lot of, a lot of positive reinforcement, I'm saying. Anybody can do that. We all got a role to play. Um, and right now is the time, you know, fascism is here. I'll take the inevitable mention of fascism for 100. And I do not want to be 40, 50 years from now being like, hmm. You're implying that if fascism were really here in the U.S. that you would have 40 or 50 years. I really sat back and did nothing when fascism was reigning over the United States of America. We all got a role to play and we got to find it and we got to play it real fast. So that's it, ladies and gents. That's, that's the entire video by the cockroach and the manlet. And that's it for me. Ladies and gents, I hope you had a little bit of fun here today. I decided to do something light as opposed to the, well, 40 minute read of the final chapter of that beating fascism book I advised in the last video, I decided not to impose that guy upon you guys quite as rapidly. But the dear cockroach has indeed laid out our options. We can either join up with fascist USA or resist with the likes of Islam and the communists on the ground. I'm absolutely certain of which side I'll choose. <coughs> Thanks, ladies and gents. As usual, stay safe, good luck, and goodbye.